the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Total Nonstop Impact. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is your host, Trent, along with my amazing co-host, J-Bone. J-Bone, say hello to the people. Ooh, oh, amazing. Ooh, I, I better live up to this tonight. Pressure's on. I am going to add a new adjective every week to you, <laughs> to my intro to you. It's good. <laughs> this week, it's amazing. Next week, it could be anything. It could be anything. Possibilities are endless, but... J-Bone, it's me and you this week. No Kyle or kyle Again, ladies and gentlemen, I know that, again, ladies. <laughs> Who am I kidding, J-Bone? <laughs> like, ladies are listening to this. Hey, hey, but, the, <laughs> hey the, the ladies love J-Bone. That's true. Ladies love J-Bone, but they don't love listening to J-Bone and Trent talk about Impact Wrestling. That's the problem. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm going to sidebar here, J-Bone. I, I put, a, I, I put a, a word out last week's show. I said, I said, if you're one of the ladies listening to this show, I want you to leave a comment and prove that there are women who listen to this show. Not one. Not a single female commented on this oh. one. <laughs> That's okay. We love the boys. The boys club right here. That's all the right. He, what, what was it? The Little Rascals, J-Bone? The He-Man Woman Haters Club? The Sausage Party. <laughs> oh, wait. No, that's something different. This is the boys club. All right. But we're hanging with the boys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. What's been going on with you, J-Bone? What's new? Oh, not too much, man. I've been doing a lot of, uh, taking care of a lot of outdoor, uh, summer projects. I'm catching up from a while back and, uh, just fixing up the property and stuff. Uh, just enjoying the, the, you know, it's been a little cooler around here lately. So it's easier to do that for me. And, nice. uh, too much. What you been up to, man? Well, I was in your neck of the woods. As you know, I was at the Wisconsin state fair. Nice. My first ever state fair. And I've heard hype. You even hyped it up to me. I did. I did. Oh. It was, dude, I, I felt bad I couldn't be there because I really wanted to, but I forgot I had some company coming over that night. So what a wild, what a wild and crazy thing that is, man. Yeah. What down an in, event. Down in West Dallas, part of uh Milwaukee. Was Milwaukee yeah. kind to you, sir? Mil oh, always. I love Milwaukee. I'm a big fan of the city. I've been going there since I was a little kid. Uh, first time hitting the, the state fair, but man, Jay, I cannot even put into words what a spectacle this damn thing was. <laughs> My body hates me. I ate a ton of crap, uh, good <laughs> crap. My body is still revolting against me today. Still, it's it's like I still got like uneasiness. Like my body hates me. I'm an, I'm a vitamin guy. I got I'm pumping myself full of vitamins and collagen and protein. My my body's he's there. It's mad at me for what I what I did to it on Saturday. Pissed it's really, off. It's it's really questioning your decisions on what you uh, ingested, eh? And it's not cheap. Damn it, Jay. Well, it's not cheap. <laughs> no, you you break the bank. You got to take a paycheck along. Unfortunately, it's yeah. I'll tell you what. I I was about to leave. I was about to leave, and I I just quickly checked the photo I posted, and you included. It. Everybody commented with. Did you get the cream puff? You got to have a cream puff. Cream puff. I said, what? I, and I purposely, I got in line for the cream puff. And it was so huge. I said, ah, forget it. It's just a cream puff. You know, what the hell? And then I went back and I got in line because of your, everybody's comments. So, Jay, as a, as, a, as a Wisconsinite, you know, tell us what the cream puff is and why it's so important. Because it's bugging me. <laughs> oh, dude, it's 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 a it's a staple if you go to the state fair. If you, I mean, there's always like new and different wild things to try. Like people have like you know, like oh, yeah. it's it's like everything under the sun on a stick and deep fried and fried, yeah, yeah. And well, the cream puff is a little different. It's it's exactly what you th would think it is. It's you know, it's like a, a big pastry, light, fluffy dough with a ton of cream on the inside and it's a big messy delicious treat and it's just you know you can get a single one you can get a case of them to go like you know like a six pack they even have its own little drive up over the last few years i yeah. think you can do yep yeah, I got a three man. pack i got a three pack there you go man what a what a wild thing but man is it like a tradition is it like a like an institution it is it just a fair can i get those if i just go to like uh you know like woodman's or something can i no like, it's it's a it's a state fair thing pretty only much only state yeah. fair okay yeah. unless there's like a local 
like West Dallas bakery that I'm not familiar with. Cause I don't hit West Dallas too much. I've lived just outside Milwaukee, but yeah. And I haven't been to the state fair in a long time. I just, yeah, okay. you know, you, you go as a younger guy and it's like, Ooh, ooh ah, and you know, yeah. you go drinking with friends, you hit your twenties and then you try all this stuff and then you hit a certain age and it's like, ah, you can only get excited about smelling cow shit so many times. You know? <laughs> I did see the pig races, pig races and the sea lion show, all sorts of stuff. It was wild, man. Totally wild. Uh, now, yeah, I meant to ask you, are you born and raised in Wisconsin? Are you Wisconsin? I, I'm born and raised in Milwaukee, yes. In Milwaukee, all right. Yes, cool. yeah, a lot of pride. I mean, I mean, it's a great town. A lot, lot of, lot of, lot of negative stuff going on in Milwaukee. You know, it's very segre- segregated. A lot of racism, unfortunately. But I still have a lot of love for my city, man. It's. Uh, I, I love yeah. it, man. It's a great town. Now, it, here's the funny thing, Jay. I'm, I'm gonna, and we're gonna, we're gonna go into the review after this because everybody's thinking, what the hell? I'm giving us a geography lesson over here, but hey, yeah. I feel like we're with our friends. I mean, our our pals here. We have we have a, a, the loyal loungers who just love to hang out, Trent and Jay Bones, so we're just talking. We're keeping it real. That's right. That's right. Now, isn't it funny? Now, Wisconsin, I said this to my girlfriend because she lived in Kenosha, Wisconsin for a couple of years. I said, isn't it funny? I said, Wisconsin is like the rednecks of the north. You know, like there's so many rednecks in Wisconsin. It's so funny. Like, especially at a state fair. Let me put it. I mean, let me preface this. At a state fair, you sure as I'll see it. I'm like, there's a lot of rednecks in Wisconsin. <laughs> and I've, and it's, like, it's like the south of the north. <laughs> I, I hear you. I mean, it's you know, it's it's pretty pretty urban around here, but people come from statewide to you know yeah. bring their whatever from their farm, their 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 vegetables, their animals, or whatever. So you get a little bit from like all over the great state oh, yeah. of Wisconsin. You get a little bit of everything it's, statewide. It's, so it's it's amazing. It is one of my favorite states that I've ever been to, man. And the people are great. Well, the reason I, I say that is because what, what I was getting at was when I mean when I say it, it's got that southern feel, it's like there's a lot of country in Wisconsin. There's a lot of land, a lot of farm, and it's a lot of country. So you can get – Oh, yeah. Like I live in Chicago, an urban, urban, diverse town, and I just have to drive an hour, an hour, and I get like outdoors – my outdoors fix. Like people in Chicago don't go outdoors in Chicago. They go to Wisconsin – to get their outdoors fixed, do their canoeing and their hiking and this and that. That's why I love Wisconsin. It's like the south of the north. That's what I love about it. <laughs> Go up north there, hey. Yeah, I love it, man. Great town. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, your, your city was great to me. Great state fair. I recommend anybody check out the Wisconsin State Fair. But, Jay, we're not here to talk about state fairs. We're here to talk about Impact Wrestling, the August 9th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling to be exact. Yes. emanating from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Hell of a hell of a time. Hell of a show. The Windsor tapings, as I've mentioned, Dre, are my favorites. I love that venue a lot. Great, Saint great crowd. Really is. Great crowd. Great crowd. They're a great crowd, man. Windsor is a fun crowd. It's that BCW crowd, you know? Yeah. And uh, they know a lot of the guys are familiar. They're supportive. And I told you, it's just, it's like, it's like a weekend. It's like Friday night wrestling. It was just, it's such a blast. But, before we jump into that, Jay, we're going to talk a few comments from last week's show. Let's get into that for a few, and we're going to kick it over to the review. So let cool. me let me start it off. Not that we have too many. We're just going to jump on a few here. Uh, I'm going to put over a few of them because they were they're really putting over Kyle. So as you guys know, Kyle is, is a hardworking. He's a hardworking boy. He's he's a he contributing member of society. Um, some people have said, "What do we got here?" Mir Neesom says, "Where's Kyle? Do I have to put on APB on him?" No, he's working. Mir, he's he's working hard. Uh, and C. O'Connor said, Kyle is becoming a man. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Weisner loves the, the tie clip. AK Infinity says, I'll see y'all in Chi Town. Come with my girl. What food spots do you suggest? Jay, you know damn well I recommended him like 18 food spots that he's got to go eat at. Oh, nice. <laughs> I said, You got to go to Giordano's. You got to go to Portillo's. I gave him all the ones that people are going to ask him about that if he went to them. And then once we're in the thick of it, I'm going to say, all right, now, now you've been to like the touristy ones. I hear, now you got to go the real ones. There so, you go. I'll, uh, be, I'll be heading down there myself, man. I'm really excited. Beautiful. AK, look for me. Look for me and Jay. We're going to be down here. And hopefully Kyle makes his flight in. He's He's been talking about it. I told him my couch is available. So 
Hey, the guy's, wor- the guy's working hard enough. He's, he's, he's got should, the money. He's, yeah, he's got to have a plane ticket, right? <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Really, really hoping, yeah. Be All great. Right. All right, so let's talk. Uh, Hakeem Fortin says, uh, one of the big issues about Unbreakable was the lighting and the audio production. I hope Impact fixes that soon as it doesn't look good for the company or the app they're constantly advertising. I think that's a great point, J-Bone. The, I didn't see the video. The lighting to me was fine. Uh, the audio was awful, un- unbreakable. And it, yeah, um, partway through the first match, you know, I was, wasn't really paying attention to it. Like, uh, everything was clear as a bell as far as watching, but there was zero audio, no commentary. And it was, I, I forget, it was either silent or you could just, like, hear the action in the ring. I, I forget. Yeah. But there was, like, no commentary, and it didn't come in until... Like like towards like middle or towards the end of the the first match, whatever it was, I forget what it was, but it was like oh tag match, Chris Bay and Watts versus uh, Peter Avalon and PP Ray or something, whatever it was, yeah. PP has a PP Ray, yeah. Um, it, no, I the audio to me it's such a pet peeve because the the crowd sounded silent, and I'm like, what? dude, I know I can see that crowd making noise, you know, like. <laughs> And it was real that, hard. It was real hard to tell like how big the place was. Yeah, but, it, but yeah, it was pretty it, deep. It, yeah, it was looked pretty like deep. a decent crowd. It was. It was a decent crowd. It was. A, it was a sellout. They 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 sold out all three tapings uh, out there, which is nice. Um, it, you know, I just think like I agree though with, with uh, Hakeem here that the audio, man, you, it's 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 a fundamental thing. We can't be sacrificing the audio because you know what happened also midway through. Not even midway through. Early on, it went to one channel because I was watching it on headphones, and I was only getting the left headphone. And I was like, "Man, we're on, we're on single channel. Like, what is happening with the audio? We got to fix the audio for sure." I, I, oh, that's interesting. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember that happening. I watched huh. it. If you watch it on your TV or computer, most likely you're getting you're getting single channel out of both speakers. But if you watch it on headphones, they fed the uh, stereo only to one headphone, and I was like, "Oh, okay. come on." So yeah, that was that was a bummer. It really um it really bugged me, but you know, I got through it. It was a great show, a phenomenal show. Oh, um, it was amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. So uh all right, so what do we got here? Renegade Otaku, new commenter. Welcome. He said he had an interesting comment. He says, to be honest, like they should just fire Rob Van Dam and just keep Rhino as the veteran in the locker room because he's more charismatic and passionate about his job. <laughs> And what the other is. Now, that's a very interesting comment. Because Rob Van Dam has gotten a lot of heat for not showing that passion and, and showing that fire uh, at, you know, while being there. So, yeah. interesting. I'd like to know what the loungers think of this one. But what do you think, Jay? I mean, I know we, it's a little underwhelming, the rain, uh, the run for RVD. But was it meant to be overwhelming? What do you think? Yeah, it w- I've talked about this a little bit on my channel and on here. It's... it's um. You know, I feel like his in-ring work has been decent, and someone hit us up on social media about this too. I don't remember what the guy's name was, um, but yeah, like the in-ring work has been decent. You know, he's been pulling out all the the, the basic moves, the RVD moves, the classic stuff that we know and love. You know, and he's had some decent matches with guys like Willie Mack and whatnot. But yeah, the promos are what's really hurting his run. You know, he's standing there, his eyes are half shut. He's, if he's trying to overdo the classic, hey, it's like, it's it's not even entertaining to this point. It's, right. it's, uh, it's really dragging, you know? It's, you know, it's like, hey, open your eyes up all the way, give yourself a couple slaps, put on a decent promo, act like you want to be there. Because right now he's acting like he really has 20 other things to do. He yeah. does, yeah, very true. And I like I, and we're gonna get into it in this episode. There's a segment in this episode that I I loved, and I was happy he was in. But I um I love Rhino. I have all I love Rhino since he debuted in ECW. I've been a big fan of Rhino uh, from day one, and I agree he's got more fire and intensity at what is he 45? Not even know how old he is. He's got more fire and intensity at this age than many at his age so i don't know about you know i don't even know if you need to fire one and and keep the other but i see what what they're going for i mean rvd is not cheap 
you know, for what they're paying RVD, are we getting our return out of it? So, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe the RVD run is short. It was just meant to be a, a short thing. So we'll see where they go with it. Rhino for sure. I am all down for keeping Rhino, though. Big fan. He is 43. That's it. Do I feel like I've been watching Rhino like forever? You know, that's funny that you mentioned 43. That means when I when he debuted in ECW, Jesus Christ, he was like 24 years old. Yeah, he was he was a young buck. My God. <laughs> you know, it's like I was <laughs> I was in my teens, right? I was like 16, 17. And I and like Rhino was like a grown ass man to me. You know what I mean? Like I was like, this is a grown ass man. And I'm like, dude, he was like 24. He's like Kyle's age. <laughs> Yeah, he's, <laughs> like, he's, he's just a little <laughs> younger than me. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy to think. Like he was a young guy then, but he looked like a grown ass man. Um, let's see here. Critical thing says I feel Sammy wants Chuck Mambo booked more because he's frequently booked for wrestling revolver. Chuck Mambo was even booked at AAW where Sammy's our champion. I uh, believe he's he's real. Sammy believes in Chuck Mambo. He's a big fan of his. It seems uh, seems like he did pretty good too. So. Not sure what the future holds for Chuck Mambo, but I think he people seem to like him. What about you, Jay? He's probably on one of those. Uh, he's from the UK, right? Yeah, he was in progress before. So he's probably what I think. What some of the people from the UK do is they get like a three month visa, and then they just tour the hell out of like they go like wherever they can go just to get their face over here, and then they go back. You know, yeah. so you know he would probably talked to a few people and you know was able to get a spot on the show and we'll probably see him around other indies depending on how long he's going to be over here so yeah good for him man that's awesome yeah i mean it could could lead to something you know could lead to something yeah, so we'll see where that goes that's you know guys like jimmy havoc have, have been doing that for years and look it got him he's now he's signed with aew it's amazing you know interesting very yeah. interesting Let's see here. Uh, we got Critical Sting says, hashtag give Rohit the mic. I agree. I tell you, Jay, Rohit's like, he's telling me, he's like, he's like, your co-host has got to be pissed off. They got to be fed up with you always putting me over, man. They got to be so sick of you putting me over all the time. I was like, nope. We're bros, that's what bros do. We take care of each other. You put each other. No, in. it's you know, and, and that's the thing. We don't all have to like the same guy on the same show at the yeah. same time. No, it's like you got your favorites, I got my favorites, and he's one guy that has been because of you. You've been talking more about him that I've been, I've been paying more attention to him. I think he just followed me, uh, uh either my podcast or my, my personal. Uh, nice twitter so i was like yeah that's awesome you know he you know he, he sees we're uh you know fans of impact wrestling and we're supporting him with the cause and yeah. hell yeah man he's awesome man it's um, all it's all love man it's all, all love. love baby all love uh he's awesome and we're gonna get into what he got into uh this episode which was phenomenal so we're gonna talk about that in just a second okay one more comment i'm gonna wrap it up here Hardy Nation 420 really love the North versus Rascals match. Rascals always deliver. Ethan Page is a much is much better in tags than he is in singles. But damn, Josh Alexander was a star of the night. Everyone throws out the most underrated tagline, but I don't think I'm crazy saying Josh is the most underrated in the business right now. I think he's probably the best wrestler on Impact other than Elgin and really gets no recognition. It's crazy. Hmm. That's a pretty heavy comment. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Jay. What do you think about that? That's do you think he's underrated, not getting enough credit? Um, he's really still he's still really new to yeah. Impact Wrestling fans, and I'm sure there's a lot of Impact Wrestling fans that are probably looking at the North, even though you and I both know how good they are. You've known them as a tag team longer than I have, but I'm impressed already. I'm sold. But there's probably other fans out there that are like, whoa, they just got in the door. They got the belts. Wow. You know, but, you know, so not everyone is going to get sold on them at the same time. You know, some fans are going to be a little more judgmental, a little more, hmm, you know, prove it to me. And it just, you know, it takes longer than others. But I have absolutely no doubt, love them or hate them, you're going to be respecting them damn soon, you know. Yeah, underrated is interesting because they are the tag team champions right now. He's got a belt. Yeah, and 
I think it's he's quieter. He's he, you know he's got a very loud tag team partner, a, a more boisterous one. But Josh does get quite a bit of interview time. So it's I know what I know what Cardi Nation's saying that he's underrated because people aren't mentioning him in that same breath as they are like the the, the top uh, the heavyweight contenders and stuff like that. But I think for where he's at, as new as he is, as you mentioned, Jade. I think it's okay right now. And as he gets more and more comfortable, like, no, this is also his first TV. He's getting more and more comfortable on TV every week. So oh, yeah. as, as that goes on, I think we're going to see a lot more out of Josh for sure. I, I mean, he, he's a great singles wrestler too. I, I would not mind at all seeing him branch out at some point down the line. So and right now they're dominating tag team champions. So that's a great thing. Yeah, and they need that. They need strong tag teams in this brand. So yes. I'm good with that. Somewhere down the road, absolutely. A single, yeah. I mean, he, I became a fan of his last year. Um, I forget what show it was. I think it was a show on Twitch or the GWN Network back last year uh, before Impact Plus was. And it was a cage match between Sammy Callahan and Josh Alexander. It just apeshit crazy. It was awesome. Yeah, was, was it from Destiny or something? Was it? Was, was it? It wasn't on Impact, right? No, it wasn't Impact. It was one of those like, "Hey, we're working with this independent company, and we're using their talent to, you know." It was yeah. like what? It was like back when they first started doing that. Yeah, I think it was like Destiny Wrestling. There was some partner show. You're right, and it was phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal! Um, all right, so let's jump in, Jay. We got the August 9, twenty nineteen episode of Impact Wrestling. Oh, I got I got one piece of news. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yet, but, but my bad, my bad. We did say we're gonna start off with the news. I got one piece of news. We'll right. jump into it. So just patience, my folks. Bad. My Appreciate bad. My the patience. Bad. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so now I know this is impact wrestling, but I did see this because I watch a lot of different stuff. This did pop up in my um my YouTube feed, and the WWE PC or the WWE put out a video on um, NXT did tryouts in Canada. Okay. Yeah, I heard they were in Toronto, right? And there was a few faces that looked familiar that I just want to give a shout out to and say congratulations on the tryout. One is a gentleman that I interviewed last year, my first one, one of my first ones on the channel, um, he goes by a different name now, so I apologize not remembering the current name. But last year when he was on Impact Wrestling and he wrestled Austin Aries as the champ, he was Dustin Cameron. Okay. Oh, he was that rookie that wrestled him. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Santino, he one of Santino's boys. Yeah, yeah. He, okay. was, he was at the, he was at the um, tryout and also... Uh, in-ring veteran and also fellow Sue Young undead bride underneath all the makeup, Casey Spinelli spent oh, some time on the, yeah, spent some time on the camera. Um, so, you know, you know where it leads for any number of these uh, 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 guys and gals, uh, nonetheless, congratulations from us. It's tremendous. Uh, just the, you could see the passion in their eyes, you know. Uh, yeah. Especially, especially Casey Spinelli. She was just, just overly excited to be there. And um, and and it's it's I've said this before, and I'll say it. I'll say it forever. No matter what your opinion is of of WWE, love them, hate them, whatever. You can't knock these people that get tryouts and it's their dream to go there someday you gotta you just appreciate it for what it is congratulate them if you see them you know yeah. that's awesome good for them good for them they casey spinelli i know uh she's phenomenal and I, I know she was a bit disheartened i don't i think she was hoping for an impact contract uh i don't think it came she seemed pretty down she, about it from what i saw some tweets and stuff but uh if she gets somewhere, that'd be good. She's a very talented, very talented girl. I hope she ends up somewhere. If it's not WWE, then somewhere else because she's uh, she's very good at, at what she does. I like her, so good for her. Yeah, good for her getting yeah. a shine, man. Yeah. So I just wanted to quick give a shout out to those two. I think there was a couple other familiar faces, but I'm not exactly sure. I, I think one of the sing uh, sing guys 
from Impact Wrestling was on there, but one that's maybe not under contract anymore. Okay. So, yeah, it could be. I could be wrong, but it, it looked a little familiar. So, But okay. nonetheless, congratulations to everyone involved. I just wanted to quick throw that out there. Good for them. Okay, cool. A little, little Impact connection there, which, is, which makes sense. Yes. Very cool. All right, Jay, let's get into it. August 9th, 2019, St. Clair, Windsor, Ontario. We kicked it off. X Division Championship match. Aiden Prince, the week before, won a contenders match to take on uh, Jay Christ for the for the title. So it was Aiden Prince, who's a hometown guy, Windsor's very own, yes. taking on Jay Christ. Yeah, it was the cr- a- crowd was hot for this. Oh, I mean, he's a hometown he's a hometown guy, so you know that crowd was prime. And you know what? I got to say, in very Jake Christ fashion, he looked good. Uh, you know, he he made this guy look good. There was a lot of great action in this one, back and forth. I really like Aiden Prince a lot. I think this kid is very, very talented. Yeah. This is, this is your young guy that you want to get while he's young and make him yours. You Absolutely, know? yes. Uh, great match, back and forth. Aiden hits a brain buster. Gets the 450, but then when he goes back up to the top for another one, uh, Jake hits him with a cutter out of nowhere. It's one of those Jake Chris cutters. We got retention, Jake Chris still champion. I, after this match, I tweeted out, I said, where the hell? I said, I really like Aiden Prince. Where the hell has this kid been hiding? And I got a reply from good old Johnny Bravo. Nice. Erotic Bravo. (laughs) Sends me a... A, a tweet and it's a link to a match he had with Aiden Prince and he said he's been really? hiding right here and it was a great match great wow. match from DCW. It, it was Johnny's great I think Johnny Brown was it was a great match so I see a future in Aiden Prince Jay what do you think I think so too I mean he he shined last week in that uh four was a four way or five way five number yeah. one yeah but I feel like he really never got, I mean, he still looked, I feel like he looked good, you know, decent in this match, but I feel like he never, how do I say this? He never got going in this match, but what he did prove mm. is how tough he is because he took a hell of a lot of offense from Jay Chris and it took him several pin attempts to try to put him away. Yeah. So he, there was, so there was that. Tough. Yeah. No, he did look tough. I think this was one of those losses where you come out looking stronger in loss. Yeah. Than you do in um, than you do in anything else. He, he looked he looked phenomenal. So good for him. I'm looking forward to uh, to more out of him. I hope he's he gets used more. I think, you know, it very well could be because we haven't seen him on any U.S. shows, only Canada. It might be a work visa thing. Maybe he's only contracted, or you know, he's like he's only allowed to work in Canada. That's something yeah, we need to change. Could be, yeah, you know, and and there's, you know, Scott demore has been working close with these guys and the guys over at this, uh, uh, the, uh, Centino Morales School, the Battle Arts Academy. I'm sure he's got his ear very close to the ground as far as who, you know, who the trainers think are ready, you know, as far as whatnot. So maybe he just needs a little more fine tuning, but uh, yeah. He's definitely got a bright future. It looks good. Yeah, no doubt. We go backstage, and Conan's trying to convince Daga and Ortiz they can get along for their tag team title match. I'm still confused about what's going on here, J-Bone, with, with, with Santana. I know he had a solo match over the weekend also. he During the tapings, he was on vacation in Puerto Rico, according to his social media. So I'm not sure what's going on. I, I know they were contracted through the end of August, and all signs pointed to... You know they're they're just gonna they're gonna leave after they're not gonna renew. Yeah, is this a way to kind of introduce like okay you bring one guy in it's Daga and maybe you know not then we get used to Daga for a couple weeks so when Ortiz leaves also it's like oh cool do we get you know maybe is there they start peppering in a new guy and now here we at we have the LAX brand continue on. That's, <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a big question mark. I mean, LAX is an Impact Wrestling entity, isn't it? Is it not? Yes. Or you it know, is. Okay. They own that. Yep. So, I mean, I don't know what Ortiz and Santana call themselves when they go other places in the Indies, because I know they tag all over the place. 
Well, they're going by LAX while they've been under contract because that's what sells. Okay. What they'll okay. do after that, who knows? That's yeah. I don't know. If, like I mean, Impact's it, been very good about people keeping the gimmicks, but this is one that's like a carrying cast, you know. So it's kind of like you don't want to let this one go because people, yeah, you, you replaced the members on this one. Yeah. And one thing I I was trying to look up earlier today, thinking we were going to be recording tonight, is whether Daga is officially under contract or not. He's not on the roster page on Impact.com, but at the end, I know I'm kind of skipping ahead here, so bear with me. Um, The last thing Josh Matthews says is, welcome to Impact Wrestling, Daga. Yes, I caught that too. So I was like, I was like, Hmm. Now, I've heard some people say he is. I've been looking for confirmation. I can't, there's nothing, well, I look on Wikipedia once in a while. It's not always a, a very good source. But, you know, um, I have not heard anything definite. So I don't want to say either way, be like, yes, you heard it here first. No, I'm not going to say anything. I, but, um, you know, I, I hope he is someday because he's not with MLW anymore. He's not. And he is the boyfriend of Tessa Blanchard. They're very yes. public about it. Yes, yeah. I so would imagine you, you would yeah. think that's kind of a shoe in, but you, you never, you never know. But uh, yeah, it's true. You never know. So we'll see where that goes. I'm, I'm very curious what the next month brings for the LAX brand. Uh, Ty, we cut over to Ty. She's in the back. She's pissed off. She's got to defend against Havoc, second time in a week because she just defended at Unbreakable. She's, she's pissed. We now we go from that. <laughs> The Ace Austin and Eddie Edwards. Now, now, Jay, this has been this has been incredible. Uh, to me, this is this is a short run feud that's already kicked into high gear. But yes. basically, if you, if you haven't seen it, you know, Ace is making passes at Alicia Edwards. He is he is hell bent on hell benting her down. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, so he is uh, he's all he's all about her. And Eddie's obviously jealous, jealous husband. So they, he brought, you know, Eddie attacked him before. So now is the match. Basically, Eddie's super violent in this one. I mean, it's man, the man's wife. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. So a lot of, you know, back and forth. They got the card spot, paper cut spot. And at one point, <laughs> Eddie, the ace is, uh, Eddie's about to take out Ace. And Ace looks at him and goes, what would Alicia think? And then... <laughs> Throws off Eddie and he attacks him and whatnot and oh yeah that's the, yeah that's just that's just throwing gasoline on fire. <laughs> Alicia runs out, uh, basically yelling at Eddie, "What the hell are you doing?" And Eddie accuses her. He goes, "Why do you care? So why do you care? Why are you defending him?" And she ba- he basically says, "You having an affair with him," and she looks stunned. So. She never it, gives him a straight answer. No, she doesn't. That's now that's little clues. I hope other people picked up on. Mm-hmm. She never ever is sitting there going, "What are you talking? You're crazy." No, we're not. No, we're not. She never really says no. Mm-hmm. She didn't say yes, but sure, sure as hell didn't say no. <laughs> so, so, so he gets out of the ring and he says, "Fine, go be with him." Yep. Now, where do we go from there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I we'll, like this view a lot. We'll, we'll find we'll find out in a little bit because we find out that Ace Austin has some cojones. Yeah, he sure does. He is. He's got some plans. We'll get to that in a second. So uh, we kick cut over from that to uh, <laughs> we get some unbreakable highlights, which was airing. Uh, no, unbreakable aired the week before, but not unbreakable was from the week prior. So we had little highlights of Sammy and Tessa. We go from that. Now this is another feud that we kicked off. Moose. Uh, that that kicked off the week prior, but now it's in, uh, it's in another gear because Moose confronts Falaba in catering where he's eating, and he shames him for his weight loss progress, which is phenomenal. Fala looked fantastic. He, he looks his arms are jacked. He's lost over a hundred pounds. Uh, Moose is trying to bully him, bully him, and they start brawling. Fala gets right up in his face. Uh, I like that they're keeping him Fala strong. I mean, he was a comedy character, and they are making him. Out to be a killer, man. I like it. I yeah, do like- it's it's about time. I mean, the, you know, just you can sprinkle in comedy here and there with certain people on a semi regular basis, but if you do it too much, I feel like it really hurts them. Yeah, especially you when you, that. especially when you see potential in a guy like uh, Falaba who can 
flipped a switch and get a, a, a bit of an evil streak in him and really go, you know, bonkers on someone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, I, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm happy about this. That's awesome. Me too. I'm, I am psyched about seeing Fa- – and I think him and Moose have some decent chemistry too, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this one actually. Yeah. It's kind of a sleeper feud for me. But I, I think this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I like I, both these guys. I, I think it's a buildup for Moose in another way, but it's it's also going to help fall by in the long run, I think. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's keeping him relevant in the roster. And it keeps him serious. It's the thing. It keeps Fala into a serious character because he's, he, again, he's been pegged as a, as a comedy character. So this yeah. actually puts him into a serious role, which is nice. Yes. So I'm glad about that. So now, all right, we cut over from that. Madison Rain, Alexia Nicole. This girl, if you recall, she was she did a dark match or explosion match, I should say, that aired that that was taped uh, after the Rebellion pay per view during the, those Monday night tapings in Toronto. Alexia Nicole, she's very young, she's great, and I think she was uh, she is definitely another future knockout. But in this one, Jay, we had Kira Hogan joining Josh and Don on commentary, which oh, she just she's great, isn't she? She's doing really good. A commentary. I, I want to I wanna just clear the air here. There seemed to be a little confusion that I saw among WWE fans and Impact fans. Oh, yeah. I, I just want to let people know that Kira Hogan did not debut on Raw tonight. Okay? I just... Wait, what happened? What, what, give me some background here. What's going on? <laughs> okay, that's, that's a joke. But Sasha Banks came back. Oh, <laughs> she had blue hair just like Kira Hogan. Now, of course, there's some we love Impact fans, but there are a few out there that are well. They said that Sasha Banks copied Kira Hogan, and it's like, oof, man, you're you're smoking the good shit this week, dude. It's like, <laughs> like oh, come on. Come on, that's just what. So everyone with blue hair is copying Kira Hogan. Okay. <laughs> well, you know it's it's a stretch because it's like, oh, she's in wrestling. She's she's black. She's in wrestling. She's you know has blue hair. It's like they're gonna they're gonna look at all that stuff, you know. Yeah. And that's not to say. Now, listen, I'm gonna say this. It's not to say these guys don't copy each other at times. That happens. No question I, about it. I'm sure there are some that look across social media, see certain things or hear about certain things. And it does inspire the actions of other. Okay. I'll say that, but it's like, (sighs) and I think I know what it is too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think, you know, it it is an us versus them mentality, you know, right. So people are just taking that on, but I got to say in that note, one of the most blatant things like that though, Jay was when, Allison K slash Sienna called out Charlotte Flair for the feathers. <laughs> Did you see? You remember that? Because like, oh, she wears the feather headdress thing, and all of a sudden Charlotte's coming out to that, and she's like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, girl, <laughs> like I've been doing that for ten years. What the hell are you talking about?" Oh it's- yeah, I I remember <laughs> seeing that. I was like, oh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's like Kira is safe. She's an impact. Yes, no, she is not on Raw. She 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 did not attack. I, I didn't watch her. I think she, Sasha Banks attacked someone or whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, listen. Good match between Madison and Alexia and Nicole. I think I really want Alexia and Nicole to get some more uh, some more shine. Uh, cross rain for the win. After the match, Kira insists that she taught Madison how to be more aggressive. And then she gets in there, and they're kind of bicker a little bit. Then they kind of give each other a nod. And then they both together beat down Alexia until Jordan Grace makes the return or yes. the, the save. So you got your tag match in the making right there. I think it's fun. I think it's going to be good. And I, I absolutely – yeah, the match was good. I did enjoy this. I feel like Alexia Nicole did a great job with Madison Rain. But, man, the commentary here was just an absolute – riot what what don Callis was feeding kiera and then like completely <laughs> ribbing josh through the whole thing at one point don tells kiera hogan that josh used to be called 
the Stanford snore fest. I was like, oh, <laughs> damn. I'm like, oh, I got to write that down. That's good. <laughs> so he took another shot at Stanford in this episode, too. He's like, oh, then he got to live in Stanford. Who nobody wants to do that or something. Yeah. <laughs> he took a few shots at Stanford in this one, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah. That's funny. That is real funny. It's it's Don's a riot. Jeez Louise. With yeah, and I, I feel like Don's you have to try that hard. Like it just naturally comes to him. That like, was so funny. It helps us feel bad for Josh sometimes because <laughs> catches him off guard. I think sometimes like what he, the hell. He, he, does. <laughs> he does. Uh he's like, what in the fuck? Like who the hell? <laughs> little, little little playful live ribbing here. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, well, Jay, from that, we got the moment that everyone waited for. Dude, for I've, been waiting for I've been waiting for months for this. Months. I waited from the, the second I heard it was announced, RVD is in the treehouse with the rascals getting high than a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. He was, I just love the initial shot. They were like, they're, they go around the table and it was like, oh my God, it's him. Oh no, it, it can't be. It's him. And then they cut over to the silhouette. And it's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the holy grail of weed has arrived. Uh, hilarious segment. Oh. I highly recommend this segment. The Great. most holy high one. <laughs> oh, man. So much fun. They are just beating each other up to get his attention. And he's just chilling there. It's We need more. We can't just end it on one. It's got to go to a few. Oh, I can't believe it's taken this long. Too good. They built it up, though. They sure as hell built it up. <laughs> they made us wait for it. The only thing that bothered me was RVD's, like, face through this whole thing. He looked like he just did, like, a 10-foot bong rip and, like, it, like, completely knocked his ass out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, had, know, he had zero expression, but, I mean, it's... I don't know if he was just trying to be more authentic, but I was like, oh, my God, is he okay? I, was like, <laughs> I agree, though. The expression was a little flat. I expect a little more animated RVD. I just wonder if he can still do that. You know, he seems like he he's... needed a little more makeup. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing about Rob. I got to say, he the age is showing. And it's funny because he was forever young. I mean, forever young. He always looked super young. Yeah. But the age... For the first time seeing Rob Van Dam, for me, the age started showing. I said, damn, you know, it really is. Uh, yeah, he's not. He, he has been around a long 30 freaking years, you know, like you forget about that. Yeah. The guy's been around a long time. Yeah. So fair enough. Fair enough. All right. We go from that, Jay. Ty Valkyrie with John Erotic Bravo taking on Jessica Havoc. It's a, uh, it's a rematch from um, Unbreakable. And a partial rematch from Slam Anniversary, so she they're getting a little familiar with each other. Uh, this one was interesting; a lot, a lot of back and forth. Um, it ended with Havoc attempting the choke slam. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I've, I, you know, I actually re refresh my memory on this one, Jay. I think now did, did, uh, uh, yeah, that's what it was. I'm sorry, my bad. Let me let me, let me back up a second. Havoc hits the choke slam. Yes. And Sue Young's music hit, and then all the undead bridesmaids come out, and they have a stare down, and then Taya basically escapes. Sue interferes, you know. They go Havoc wants to choke slam her. Sue hits her with the mandible claw, and then he had the whole whole fiasco. So, uh, no contest on the match, but man, the Sue Young return, huh? Yeah. So nice. we are. I mean, and and, and this one has been. Uh... This one's been hinted at a bit, you know, especially uh, the the sinister minister going off about Sue Young's gone a wall. We don't know where she's at and whatever, and you know the little confrontations leading up to Slam Anniversary. Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of saw this coming, but uh, it's it's still fun to watch it play out, you know. So so hell yeah, man, we got we're gonna have Sue Young. In a feud with Jessica Havoc, which, which you know, I think takes Jessica Havoc out of the title contention now. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping she would get the title, but hey, you know, uh, it's it's another. I think it's gonna be another strong knockouts feud on Impact Wrestling. So, not complaining about that. 
they always have multiple feuds going on. What do you think of this new Sue Young, uh, who's kind of like singing and almost a little creepy now, like uh, not scary, but more like oddly creepy that they're toying with lately? I, I think it's always good to expand on the character a little bit, you know, um, because she, like I said uh, last week or a week before, whenever she did that, um, she's been quiet up to this point. I don't think she's uttered a, a word. It's all been yeah. charisma through expression, the and facial what, expression, the body language. And, and yeah. What a testament to her talent, though, huh? Yeah, it just, yeah, because she is what she is still one of my favorite knockouts over the course of this last two years that she's been around. Year and a half, two years, whatever it's been. I mean, what a testament. She She's so talented. She's so damn talented and that it's like, dude, she was able to tell that much story without having to sing a single word. Consider that. Yeah, yeah that's, and she's, that's had that's some, she's had some great feuds and uh, the more uh, dynamic ones in the undead realm you know, thing going on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been cool. Yeah, it's real cool. Yes. Well, now we got to see where she goes. I, now you got James Mitchell in the middle of all of it. So a lot of possibilities of this feud, man. A lot of he, possibilities. He wasn't there though. He wasn't there. there. So it's going to be interesting to see if he, if he takes a corner. That's what got has me thinking that he's if, if, he, if he if he takes a side in this one, right? He might he might go to the other side. I mean, he's going to have now, but who's to say he's not going to, you know, want to try his hand at, at managing Sue Young again solo? So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where we go. All right, we go to the we, Jimmy Jacobs is trying to get word with Melissa Santos about Brian Cage. Uh, after his attack from Elgin, she basically is letting him know that he's not doing too good. So the champ is not in a good place. No. Here, yeah, it's kind of. I'm kind of like, man, it's almost making me want this title off of Brian. It's like such a marred title reign, you know. It's underwhelming for me. He's put yeah. on good matches, but he's underwhelming. It's it's been one thing to see the comeback leading up to you know Elgin versus cage which was an absolutely phenomenal match mm. but now he's still banged up again so yeah i it, it's I, interesting I don't to see where it goes i don't know what this is going to lead to i think everybody's assuming it's going to be callahan versus cage um if you know I don't know if if Cage. I know because I know Cage is. I've said this before, but I know Cage has been fighting injuries and being hurt over the last uh, you know year, on and off, in, internationally, different places he's gone to. So he's had a rough year, man. He's had a he pretty has. rough year. Yeah, he has. Uh, we'll see where he ends up going with it because it's to the point where this guy can't take too much more injury. You know, shit. Yeah, we'll just find out. Maybe, maybe maybe rest up for uh, you know a few months, half a year to a year, depending on what's all banged up. You know, some you gotta, you know, for longevity, sometimes it's what you gotta do. Unfortunately, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where for how he ends up. But um, but all right, man, we go from that to Daisy Hit Squad. That's one of the best segments of the night. They, <laughs> they go to the. Great. The Deaners Bar. Deaners are drinking. They're having a nice little drink, a nice little dive bar, and the De and the Daisy Itzwa goes in there, and man, they just uh, they allow a little violent side of themselves, and they they start brawling with the Deaners. Brawling. Oh yeah, they're beer. busting beer bottles and everything. You name it, beer bottles. Everything's flying, and uh, they end up leaving the Deaners hanging, or, or no, I'm sorry, all the way around. They take out the the, the, the Daisies, and G Gama's like, no, no, no. Yeah, they turn their attention to Gama. He's like, no, you wouldn't hit me. I'm an old man. And then he goes to run out in very cartoonish fashion. He runs into the closed door, knocks himself out, <laughs> and then runs away. <laughs> and then uh, they go back to the bar, and the Daisies get up, and then there's nail with beer bottles, and so they stand tall. So... We, uh, you know, we got this feud continues. I love this feud because I love that it keeps going and they find new stuff. This is a fun feud to be a part of. 
It is. It is. It's 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 a little bit of comedy, but they're they're throwing in the violence to to make it uh, a, a, you know I th- think a little more enjoyable for the the more hardcore fan. You know, it just shows that there's uh, there's different aspects to this, and they can uh, you know throw a little bit of everything in this feud. So yeah, I'm I'm really digging this too, man. I like it. I think they've uh, they've done a good job with just making you care about it every week. It doesn't get boring to me. I, I enjoy it. This can go all the way to, uh, about for glory for me, man. If I'm if I, you had me writing it, I just stretch it out. There's always new scenarios what they're finding. You know? Yeah, I mean they they don't have and th- that's the thing is as long as they're doing stuff like every at least every other week, you know whether it be a, a singles match, a promo, a something, you know it, it doesn't have to be every single week as long as they're as they're keeping it fresh, and they're keeping it good and entertaining. Yeah, they could. Yeah, mm. absolutely, absolutely, man. We'll see where they go. Um, it's, I'm I'm. I'm hoping they keep it going. Yeah. Find a way. Uh, we go from that, Jay. Stone Rockwell Nate taking on Nate Madsen. Now, Stone is another guy who just shows up in Canada. Uh, great voice. He's got, like, you know, a very unique, unique voice <laughs> that he uses to his advantage. But what wow. I thought was inter- interesting here. I got to tell you, one one thing just popped in my head. And if I don't sure. get this out of my head, I was thinking about this earlier today. I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to tell Trent about this. Yeah, what do you got? All right. So I was watching some of NXT TakeOver that was up in Canada. Okay. And there was a segment during the TakeOver where uh, there was a brawl between Matt Riddle and uh, Killian Dane. And the security that broke it up was a bunch of local Canadian wrestlers. One of them, Stone Rockwell. Really? And Stone Matt Rockwell. Riddle, Matt, no, Stone Rockwell's a big guy. He's a big guy. Matt Riddle gave him a GTS. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Stone Rockwell taking some punishment. So shout out to Stone Rockwell getting a GTS from Matt Riddle during uh, NXT TakeOver Toronto 2019. Crazy. Good for him. Good for him. I like Stone, man. Took on an old timer, Spider Nate Madsen. Uh, this is uh, if you watch early independence of the early two thousands indies, Nate Madsen's been around a long time. Oh wow! So, yeah, he's kind of on the the back end of the career, but he was uh, he was a big he was a staple on the indies for a long time. Uh, but yeah, this one uh, this one didn't really get too far. Uh, Rhino interfered in this one. He takes out Madsen with a gore. Uh, he sets his attention to Stone Rockwell, who b- tries to bribe him with broccoli. And <laughs> it's no use because Rhino takes him out of the gore. Uh, Rhino is is that what that was? It I was broccoli. It was, I thought it was a piece of candy or something. <laughs> no, I, he, he posted it. And he's like, I, Rhinos are supposed to like broccoli. I don't know why that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, you know. <laughs> it was just like... It's so funny. Not. I love him. I love him. I love him. I think he's fantastic. So they, uh, yeah, they put that out there. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so, so Stone gets gored. Uh, Rhino calls out Elgin, and he's saying, get your ass out here. Uh, Elgin comes out. They meet halfway. Br- big brawl on, on the apron. Uh, a lot of potential on your title, title picture, you know? A lot of potential there. Those two guys are towards the top. But what... Uh, Take away from this one, Jay. What'd you have on this one? I think this is a way to take Elgin out of the title picture. Because I don't think they want to keep him in there too long because now they're building up this whole thing, the whole, you know, Tessa, Sammy thing. So well, I mean, we know we know what the number one contender is. Sammy's the number one contender contender. So now I think they're pulling Elgin away from Brian Cage. We got the whole Brian Cage health issue up in the air. And, you know, Tess is still going after Sammy. So you got all these things kind of revolving around each other, but still separate at the same time. So, so yeah, I don't think we're going to see Elgin in the title picture really hardly anymore. But it was still, it was a great introduction to him on Impact Wrestling. But I, I love this feud. 
these men when these two go at it oh my god they better they better uh you know put some extra fasteners on the ground for the ring because man they're gonna just whip the shit out of the place <laughs> nice man nice all right cool got another couple segments before we kick it over to the um the main event so we go backstage ace austin is talking to a bunch of trainees like, you guys know what i'm oh. doing out there bragging right he's just kind of going off and bragging and then he says something that i never thought i would I would hear on a wrestling show. <laughs> he's like, you know, I'm really. He's like, you know, I'm gonna do that. He ever his wife, and they're like, what? He goes, no. He goes, you know, I plan on doing. And the guy's like, what? He goes, bang his wife. <laughs> I was like, that was pretty straightforward. Holy shit! He's not like, holding back on that one. <laughs> straight up with a bullet. He's just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bang his wife. And I was like, what? <laughs> I never heard of that on a oh. wrestling program. I've heard choppy choppy your PP. I've never heard that. <laughs> that was new, man. But uh, should be very very interesting. Uh, from that, Jay Gama Singh and the Daisy Hit Squad are, are, are discussing Rohit being hilarious because he makes a suggestion, and Gama basically says the same suggestion, and uh, he's like, "I just said that." <laughs> <laughs> and he got Roger. It's all right. I let him have it. Yeah, but good, uh good, good promo yeah gotta 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 put over uh put gotta put over gamma <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> but uh we'll see where that goes ove cam after that jay sammy reveals another huge tag team match next week him and dave christ taking on tessa and tommy dreamer Ooh. tommy dreamer you know <laughs> he's, he's targeting tommy dreamer once again so another another uh Another tag match, mixed tag. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But um, I don't know. It's, it's furthering the Tessa and Sammy Callahan feud. That's what's important. That's yeah. the more important part. All right. Main event time, Jay. Tag team champions, the North, Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, taking on LAX, uh, LAX Temporary, which is Ortiz and Daga. So... Uh, yeah. We talked about earlier, Daga delivered on this one, huh? What do you oh, say? Oh, man. That, I've been a fan of Daga's since Lucha Underground for so a few years back, and I know he's been featured more all over the place. Uh, he, he was in MLW for a cup of coffee. That didn't turn out so hot, but uh, recently been, went back down to uh, AAA, was part of Triple Mania. So, yeah, he's all over the place lately. It's uh, great to see him on TV. I, I'm really hoping he sticks around here. Yeah. Damn, I think he, I think he's good. He's a good member of the roster. I don't know how good he can talk, but at least he'll have a uh, – you know, he's a solid performer. So, a lot of back and forth in this one. I don't even bother keeping track of this one. The, the fun thing was when the North uh, were able to clip on their finish – out of nowhere and uh it was great like they just did that that whips and that that whipper or that uh what do we call it like a you know like a like a whiplash you know oh, move yeah. that they do for that finish uh they were really hit they were able to hit that and that was it man that's all she wrote yeah. so they, they, and they which and they pinned, pinned ortiz which i thought was strong a strong message to send out there so uh great match give me your thoughts on it jay what do you think you well, they that? they really put over Daga in this one, as far as like a it, it kind of felt like an official uh, welcoming, like introduction almost. Even though he's been, you know, he's been on Mexican tapings before and other other tapings before. Yeah. Um, they called now. My 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 Spanish isn't super good, so just bear with me here. I'm going to put on my professor cap here. Uh, Don called. Daga L strong style. Now I'm pretty sure that means the strong style. Yes. Okay. <laughs> L strong style. I like it. <laughs> L L strong style. Little right. little uh, little uh, Chris Farley joke. and see if anybody gets that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you want to do it again? Roger, repeat it again. See if uh, anybody gets it. Oh, just the, the classic Chris Farley joke that he's talking about um, El Nino, the classic storm back way, way, way back when El Nino was around. And he goes, that stands for the Nino. 
the Nino. <laughs> so yeah, I heard L Strong style, and I'm like, oh, I, can, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. There you go. There you go. You got it out. But this one, yeah, yeah, we got we retain. Well, sorry, retain retain the tag team belts on the North. And like you said, you heard something interesting on the way out of the show. You want to share that with the uh, with the public? Oh, you mean when uh, North was exiting? Yes. Oh, they they were cut the promo. I don't remember exactly what they said, but uh, they just basically putting themselves over. They're like, you keep feeding the teams to us, and we're going to keep knocking them down. Yeah, that was it. That's a good hook, man. Real yeah. good hook. Good way to end it. But um, fantastic. I, it was a fun, very fun episode. Great crowd. I, I, I enjoyed watching it a lot. I really it's did. it's that's the, this is just a great example of a well-rounded impact episode you got the ladies you know strong you got the uh, good tag team action uh you got a little bit of comedy thrown in there you know mm-hmm. you got a little bit of everything so yeah just yeah can't complain this was this was a good one this is a very good one windsor they they, they always kill it but uh, so that was it, man. Jay, that was the August 9th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling. Uh, pretty good, man. I think we got a guy nice still. Uh, we got our we, we hit our hour mark, which is nice, right on the hour. So very cool. I I like it. I think what is it? Two more or one more in Windsor? I can't recall, Jay, because I know they're going to Mexico after this one. Yeah, they're doing Mexico for two days uh, later this week because we're recording this Monday night, and it's Thursday and Friday, I believe, they're going to be down there. And then uh, a couple weeks after that, they're going to be in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And then they're doing a couple specials down in Oklahoma where they're bringing back Victory Road for uh, uh, Impact Plus taping down there, down south. And I believe it's going to go from there um up to shy town for That's bound for it. glory man, i'm looking forward to it got the yeah, ticket man. i'm ready for it man gonna we're be going fun. dude we All are right. going I, it's on, gonna man. be i dude i couldn't be more excited man it's gonna be my first impact uh show ever so nice, yeah, nice. Man. Right, we're in we're in bound for glory season man so here we go we're off the races on this one but man man great show jay i'm uh, i'm happy with it Really enjoyed that. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and, and start getting some plugs out. Let's tell people where they can continue the combo from you as you broke down. Uh, you know, Unbreakable. You've had you got some more in depth stuff. So let's let's tell people where they can find you. Oh yeah, I, I recently uh, reviewed Unbreakable and Starstruck over on uh, Smash This podcast. You can look that up on the old YouTube. You can also find yeah, me cool. on uh, the on the old Twitter box. Uh, over at uh, uh, Jbone 5150 that's J-A-Y-B-O-N-E-5150, and also at Smash This Podcast on Twitter, and uh, Instagram, Smash This Podcast, and Facebook, Smash This Podcast. So, Smash yeah. is all over the place. Everywhere. You're everywhere. Well, everywhere. so are we, Jay. Everywhere. <laughs> Every bit of social media is going to have Sammy Callahan's I, picture. The only thing I don't have is Snapchat. No oh, Snapchat. hold it strong. I am not that cool. How many listeners would add Jay on Snapchat if he got one tomorrow? Oh, <laughs> I think I downloaded it a couple of years ago when it first came out. I had no clue what I was doing on it, so I deleted it immediately five, five minutes later. Oh, wow. So, yeah. The, I'm, uh... just, I'm just not that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, you got Not Jay's much. plugs. Yeah, I'll tell you where you can find us. You can find you can find us wherever podcasts are found: Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, Spotify. You name it. Podcast wise, we're on it. So look up Total Nonstop Impact. Also, if you're listening to this on the direct audio, you can find us on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. Just go ahead and YouTube type in the Impact Lounge. Show comes right up, or the channel comes right up. We're the flagship show. Check us out there. You know, subscribe on iTunes and everything. Like, review, subscribe. Get in there. Tell us what you think. Uh, we also have um, 
from social media, you can find us at too. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at We Talk Impact. Connect with us on all the social media. We love talking to you guys. We love hearing from you guys. Give us all the feedback. We, Jay, did you see we had some beautiful comments last week on uh, Twitter from some yes. fans, man. Yeah, man. It's it's most appreciated. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Take us in it. Talk. Yeah. Chat. I, got, I, gotta <laughs> I hate give the it. term, but chat it up with us on social media. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I got to give a shout out to Sid Bones and, uh, and uh, Bill Mack, two guys who every week, Sid Bones is kind of newer listener, but man, every week these two give us a great review. Yeah. Uh, very appreciative, guys. Thank you. Uh, you guys can connect with me at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check me out on my other podcast, the Backstage Boys podcast, where I cover independent wrestling, specifically AAW, because I work for AAW. So uh, you can check that out if you want a little indie fix. But this is my this is my flagship Total Nonstop Impact, the ones with the one with all the listeners, all the people who are listening to us. The say hello to the people, J Bone. That's the people. That's yes. who it's for. <laughs> the people. The people. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. But guys, definitely be sure to connect with us and give us all your feedback. We love feedback. You can feel free. If you want to be anonymous, leave it in the leave it in the uh, feedback thing in uh, on iTunes if you want. You know, just just give us feedback. We love it. Constructive, good, you name it. We want to hear it. So, I think uh, I think that'll do it for us. J Bone, am I missing anything after covering the August 9th, twenty nineteen episode of Impact Wrestling? And you can find Kyle over on the nearest uh, milk carton. There you go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look for him. That bastard. Who knows where the hell he is nowadays? <laughs> love you, Kyle. We know yep. you're busy. We'll, we, we, know you, he, we know he's going to – he's not off the show permanently or nothing. He's. We know he's going to come back, but we know he's busy. So it's a yeah. crazy summer for him. We love you, Kyle. Yeah, we're going to give him a little leverage, but uh, he'll, he'll be back on track soon. In the meantime, yep, we, uh, we're have, we'll continue having a good time. So, Jay – that's going to do it for me. That's going to do it for us. Do you have anything else to add or do you want to just say goodbye to these people? Uh, we're out of here. Take care, folks. See you, everybody.